I feel like uh, when a student complains about gaming that it's usually, well, you're here for academics and it's not taken but very you're seriously. you're a resident hall. Yeah, like I, I live here. Tech fee to have service as a resident hall. When, how, how is that perception being passed along as well? Uh, just so much that um, when we take down the information, we <coughs> send it in. I've had people send in tickets for various things, and it's just usually, as far as I know, nothing's really done about it. Um, I know James has put in several tickets just for this one game, and it it worked. Uh, it sort of worked before everyone got to school when I was here during that training week that we play it, and then it hasn't worked since then. I'd, I'd like to, before elaborating a bit on this particular issue, I, I, I need to make sure that something's clearly understood in that. There is nothing more important than your satisfaction with your time. Gaming is a quality of life issue that, as far as I'm concerned, is more important than academics and it's, and sometimes to, to a degree. Plus, faculty yeah. members will disagree with me on that. <laughs> right? You're here to get an education, but you're also here living your life. Your homework is done. When your homework is done, it's the it's it's I'm not. I, I have no interest in playing parent or, or, or trying to prioritize anyone's time. Right. Bottom line is, if you're here living, then you have as much of an expectation that that quality of life will, will be respected by us and accommodated to any reasonable degree. So my take is on it: you should be able to have an experience here that is at least as good as what you experience off campus. Right. And where these issues exist, we need to know about them so that we can resolve them. Because none of us sit in our cubes all day and game, <laughs> and then we go home at night, we're not gaming on this network. So we can't share this experience with you. The only way we can know about it is if you guys tell us. So it's critical this stuff gets passed on. So to answer your question, James, yes, something can be done. I don't know what it is yet because we really haven't investigated this issue to this degree because I, it's, it's really one of the first times I've been aware of it to this, to this level. I have a little bit more information that might help you. It seems to only be on the wired, um, the wired ResNet, that's where the issue seems to be because I've tried it on the wireless mm -hmm. and I've also tried it on um, the like the faculty connections like down in my <coughs> ass in the basement. So and it works fine. So it only seems to be on ResNet. I don't know if that helps, but yeah, and we can talk more about offline if, when we start digging into specifics on it. Sure. Because there are again, there's how you connect and who you are when you connect and where you are when you connect all use different segments of our network and they're, they're handled differently. <coughs> so you may very well find that she's on a resume a different performance than if you're in plug and tool or sitting on a faculty member's computer than if you're on wireless. Mm -hmm. um, for reason we talked about before about being able to share. Yeah. I would like to just let you know about one thing is on an ICAS website, so you just go to Plymouth.edu <coughs> and then do a search for ICAS and go to Department of for Information Technology. This feedback button here. Anytime you don't feel you're getting satisfaction with the help desk, you think you're blowing you off and not listening to you, click on that feedback sheet. That will send a note to my leadership team right here. Actually, <coughs> For things like that, and also like the move yeah. to the repair center, I feel like that information should be sent out yeah. to the students because I know almost all of campus will not know about that. Yeah. And then we are, we are working on communication plans. Actually, there was one student I don't know if he's here tonight, a journalism major. No, he's not here. Uh, we're going to hire him to help us put a marketing and communications plan together. Uh, we did the clarity. If you've seen that in end of September, first part of October, talks about all the new things we're working on. We hope to have that communication out there, virtual tours, videos, that's not approved yet, right? Different things that, to, to let you know what we're working on. So, but this feedback section here, we're gonna reward it. So uh, maybe it'll say, still not satisfied with our service, click on that and that will go to our group here. Okay. If you have other ways or other, other suggestions, I mean, I was going to ask you, what do you guys find the best ways to contact 
you know, today the email crashed, but I didn't see anything of like. Well, to, that's a challenge. When email crashes, you can't use email to communicate. With exactly. People. So um, when we had email issues today, we handled that by posting a status update on our website. You can see that in the in the reg nav bar that says there's email issues. Yeah. Um, we're working with our um, web web designers to make that more prominent on the page, so it sort of slaps you in the page <coughs> a little bit when you go to the site that there's an active alert. Um, we also um, front loaded our help desk with a message. So if you call had called the help desk today, you would have gotten a message that says, "We are experiencing trouble with email." Blah blah blah. We're working on it, kind of thing. But yeah, when it's an email situation, it's hard to communicate because. We have other systems that we're working on looking for grant funds that if you're in a classroom, right now we have the, the text um, text messaging system, if you're familiar with that. But if your phone's in your purse or your backpack is off in the corner, if something happens on campus, you're not going to know what's happening. So we're investigating this system, one we're looking at called Alertus, um, to visually alert everybody on campus if something happens. So if you're outside, uh, we have these little boxes that um, our hope is that we can have several of these in all the public spaces. There's also a software piece that goes with this as well. That if there's an event, something happens on campus, school closes for snow or something like that, or there's a flood like there was a uh, potential flood about a month ago, these things will light up. There's a little pop up that will come on every computer that's connected to the network and that message will go out. So my hope is that gone are the days that something happens and your phone's in your purse or it's not on, um, we want you to get the message. Anything happens on campus and in the community, that's our, our goal to get that out there. What other suggestions would you I have? I have a question. Do you ever think it would be possible like on your microphone to add an IT tab? Like you have a library tab, could you add an IT tab? Because like I now know working with Steve that you guys have a newsletter and all these other yeah. stuff that <coughs> I had no clue you guys ever had, but I have more apt to go, like, if you guys have problems with my IT tab. Yeah. If, you were, if you felt like, oh, something tinky with mail, you'd go and put it on the IT tab. Let me, let me just talk about that. The, and, you like, the and then you'd be like, oh, you're having an IT problem. Now I know, like, because I feel like my phone is like a go to place for it. We have a, a major great, project great. underway right now. I wrote this um, web charter in the spring. In our cabinet, asking, what do you think about our web and our web presence? And I won't repeat what I told them. So, anyway, we have a major project underway to completely revamp our website. And what's done right now is a three phase project. The first phase is done a complete refresh, repaint, new paint job to the home page and the admissions site. So, this looks markedly better than what we had before. Uh, we're kicking off phase two that's going to completely <coughs> dive into all the pages. And I was amazed myself uh, to learn how many pages there actually are on our web server. Um, can I repeat that? Sure. Any guesses how many pages, web pages, there are? Uh, about 194,000 separate pages. <coughs> well, each one of you have the ability to create a page. Yeah. But anyway, it's an exorbitant number of pages that we really need to dive into, clean it up, make it better. Um, the main page of my, the my page that I have ideas for um, is also in need of, of repair. There's way too many tasks across the top. There's way too much information here. You can't find things easily. So. <laughs> So, so we need your input on that. We have a new web advisor group that there's also students that are, are part of. And this phase two of the web is going to dive into a lot of these different pages to make it more usable. This is scary. You want to find something that's it's hard to find. I have so. a quick cool question about my phone. Yep. Why is it that like every day I have to log in like 30 times? Like in my old school, like you would just stay logged in like 24 hours. Is there just for security, like, like so your roommates or like, people need that one accidentally, or? Yeah, that, that's like, just kind of like a cool girl browser going back up at her, like, after just sat for like 15 minutes. That's a general thinking. I mean, I, I, I can't speak necessarily to what your previous school did. You do have a lot of access to your student information through my Plymouth. Um, you do have.